Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Hanging Out and Talking Squarespace. Tonight's topic is Squarespace 6. I'm your host, Josh Broughton of Big Picture Web. Thanks so much for joining us. Tonight, we've got a couple of guests with us, and we're going to be talking about Squarespace 6, the new version of the Squarespace platform. So with us tonight, joining us right away, we've got Alan Hauser. Hey, how you doing? My name's Alan Hauser, and uh, I am the uh, founder and creative director. Well, Squareflare.com is, is my business, and I specialize in um, designing and building uh, custom Squarespace websites. And so you can find me over at Squareflare.com. Great. Thanks, Alan. And also joining us tonight, we've got Peter Slapnisher. Hello, uh, my name is Peter Slatnicher, and I specialize in community uh, websites, uh, primarily for uh, suburbs, cities. Uh, I've been researching and doing different types of social experiments for the last couple of years, and now I develop custom sites at peterslatnicher.com and continue to grow localpigeon.com. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Welcome to both of you. So uh, for our first topic for the night, uh, we'll be talking about Squarespace 6 first impressions. And uh, so guys, um, tell us a little bit about your first impressions of Squarespace 6. Go ahead, Alan. Well, okay. Yeah, sure. So um, I actually was a, was a beta user of V6 as it's known. Um, so I, I was actually uh, using it last summer. So I've kind of seen it grow since then and, uh, and I was really kind of thrilled about, about the opportunity and uh, um, I think, you know, it's been a long time coming certainly and uh, we really didn't know when it was going to launch, which, um, you know, now that it is launched, I think it's going to have a lot more growth. I, I don't think we've seen, and we certainly haven't seen everything there is out there um, for the platform, but I think they just needed it to get out the door and, you know, get people actually using it, get some traction. Um, but, but yeah, my, my, my first, my first reaction was, you know, wow, this is, this is going to be kind of a, a great, a great future for, for web development, certainly. I, yeah, yeah, Peter, what did you Josh, think about the new platform? It's, it's different. I mean, it has a completely different feel. It's a lot more flexible. Um, it, it's just completely different. You have to rethink everything, in my opinion, just our, for the work I, I've been involved in. Um, it's easy. So simple. I, 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 I love it. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, it's it's really nice. I mean, Squarespace with their new platform for those watching, we've got uh, 50 new features, including the new layout engine is what Squarespace is branding their their new user interface for designing pages. It's awesome. Drag and drop, bring in blocks, uh, widgets that are really customizable. It's it's pretty crazy. So um, now a lot of this stuff was in Squarespace 5, but uh, it's a lot more streamlined in in six. Um, pretty pretty interesting. Uh, some of the some of the streamlined or how they reimagined certain elements that that you used to have on Squarespace five. Isn't that uh, what do you what do you think, Alan? I think as like a as a designer, things like you know now adding social media buttons at the end of your posts or blog posts or stories or whatever now. Are gonna, it's going to be a snap because you've got like one-click integrations with social media services. But Alan, as a developer, what what does this mean for you? Oh, really? I think you're muted there, my friend. Hey, Alan, I think you're you're muted, pal. It looked good. Oh, there we go. There it is. Okay. My browser was totally lost. There it is. Sorry. <laughs> hey. We did it. I was like, as you're, Hi, ramping, as, as you're ramping up to the intro of it, I'm like, where's my browser? And I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> there it is. 
I guess Sorry. I was full screen was the problem and couldn't find it. <laughs> um, so your question, your question was about... Yeah, that was funny. So my question is, you madly scrambled to alt-tab back into your browser. Uh, it was um, about how Squarespace is going to change things for the designer slash developer community uh, with things like one-click social sharing integrations and things like that. Sure. So um, I think right now it's still early to tell. I mean, you know, we we you know kind of keep saying that we we have a a Squarespace podcast. J J Josh and I co-host uh, over at Content Structure and Style, and uh, we keep saying, oh well, it's you know it's still still to be seen what how this is going to affect people, but. I have actually seen more recently like like the back end and you know I I can see that it is entirely very cool. Uh it's it's a little tricky just kind of getting into it because there's not a whole lot of documentation. I think that's all coming up very soon. Um but I mean um the the, the developer will actually have the ability to customize anything between the HTML start and the HTML end. Um and what that means is you could use the Squarespace widgets or the Squarespace blocks, um, things that Squarespace has already written, and then call those in your template, um, and then just kind of put those on, on a loop. So, so if it's like a blog post, let's say, and, and you don't ever want the date posted or whatever, in V5 you could go into like the, the, uh, the, the settings and kind of disable that. And in V6, I, I think it's, it's a totally, you know, oh, open canvas to, to do those kind of set settings like that. So I think, you know, um, I think as far as customization goes, I think the sky's the limit, you know. Yeah. So it's just a matter of learning the, 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 uh, the whole platform and, and kind of figuring out the best way to do those things. Yeah, I think that's such a, uh, it's an interesting point because on the surface it might seem that it's going to, uh, you know, replace the need for some of that uh, development work that people have needed in the past, like, hey, I need some custom code here, I need some custom code there. Um, but when you really look at it, Squarespace has yet, they, they've made those things easy, yes, but mm -hmm. at the same time, they've created much deeper pipes and, and ways for developers to integrate and build their own things using the Squarespace uh, architecture that I think the this platform is really... Um, you know, to be seen, but you know, we'll we'll talk about that a, l a little bit later. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think that that's really interesting. Now, uh, uh, I'm just a consumer per se, so I'm not really gonna need to have access to this all the second layer, this developer layer. But um, I really think that 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 uh, that separation of developer and consumer features is really going to be helpful as well. So, uh, Peter, how do you use uh, Squarespace right now? Or do you use a lot of the custom development uh, tools, or do you use uh, what Squarespace version 5 has provided you and kind of work uh, in, the, in the confines of a, or, you know, within the framework, I should say, of uh, an existing template? Yes, definitely. I, I try to keep it really easy. Um, so I can uh, work with a number of different clients, I guess. Um, for me, the biggest discrepancy between maybe V5 and V6 is the potential to um, evolve the business model between designer, developer, and the client. It seems like in the past you would charge per page, and I, I'm almost thinking there's potential to charge per, per element or per per integration because even though, you know, Squarespace makes it really easy to integrate with like Instagram for, as an example, I don't know if people are ready and they don't know how necessarily to use Instagram. I mean, it's so powerful how V6 has um, made that so easy for the end user, but with th that ease, I think comes responsibility for s small businesses that are trying to grow their brand equity. Um, but I, I'm just really happy. I mean, it's, it's almost, it's just like giving a kid a Ferrari that goes 120 miles an hour. Right. It's yeah, funny you mentioned, uh, it, it's funny you mentioned Instagram because I was actually looking last night. I mean, my, my, my site's on, on V5 currently, uh, squareflare.com. And 
um, I was thinking oh, it might, might be kind of neat to add Instagram photos to my website, maybe put them down in the photo fo- in the footer or something like that. And I started re- researching what it took to do it, and it's like it's pretty hard. I mean, there's there's only a few services that would that would convert an Instagram photo collection into RSS, and then you got to take that RSS and do something with it. I you know it 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 is possible, but, but but for me, I had other things to do, so I just didn't keep going. But you know, it's 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 one of those things where you know if a client said it, sure, I, I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and do it. But it's just one of those things that's like you just take you know you take it for granted if if it's available as as a simple drag and drop widget that you find on V6. Yeah, that's a. Uh... That's really interesting that the giving a kid a Ferrari t- metaphor, you know, it's it's it, it's going to be a powerful tool, and I think the challenge now becomes how to create a really compelling website, not necessarily a website that has a million bells and whistles and widgets and gadgets and things like that, you know. But I I think the general consensus along the design community is that's that's the expectation now is less less is more. I mean, is that it, wouldn't you guys say? Somewhat. I, it, it just kind of depends, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> depends on what you're doing. Unless you want more, then more is more. I suppose. I'm not very well connected with the design community, apparently. <laughs> so what's the, uh, what's the favorite feature so far of Squarespace 6 for you guys? Peter? Nothing. I'll tell you mine. I'll tell you mine. Um, and it was just released today, actually. It is the ability to do a custom um, page uh, code uh, or page header inje- code injection. And so really? before, yeah, yeah, they just released it today. I actually uh, was talking to Casalina, uh, and he uh, he uh, I gave him some feedback, and he actually was like, oh yeah, we'll build this in, and he built it in, and they released it today. But now, before you could only put code at the header level for your entire Squarespace website template. So you'd put your Google Analytics script there or something like that, so it'd be on every page. Now, for each individual page, not including a blog post, but that, you know, there's, that's, I don't think that that matters much, but like on any given page, you can put any custom code you want in your page header, which I think is pretty darn huge. That's awesome. Yeah, very Thanks much so. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> I'll check that out tonight. Yeah, well, I want to I show you guys just how how potentially cool that is, and this is something that in, I'm just playing with now. So you know, don't judge me if it's not that cool. But there's there's this this thing in Google Analytics now called experiments, and what it allows you to do is um, take your website, and let's say you want people to contact you, and that's your goal. You can set that up as a goal on your website, and then you can sh- uh, show people two different versions of that of that particular web uh, of that particular contact page, and um, you would you would say, well, I want to on this version, I want to have something you know compelling, and on this other version, I want to have kitties. And so then you you set what goal you want to measure, uh, but then it kind of every visitor that comes to your website and asks for each of those pages, it will uh, serve up 50-50. Uh, each one of those pages. So half your visitors will get the control, half your visitors will get the Yay for Kitties page. So um, incorporates A B testing. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's something that is set up so simply and in a matter of 24 hours, you'll start to get some data coming into your Google Analytics ba- dashboard that shows, see I already have something here. I've got an hour of data, four visits, no winners yet. Um, but uh, uh, zero conversions on the on the one that I have, but it, it'll show you the actual conversions that each one racks up and uh, which one is best, and it'll statistically va- uh, show you prove what design is better uh, on your site. So I think for designers, that's a huge piece of knowledge that you can know exactly what page is performing best on your website. I think. How did you set that up? Um, so it's it's super easy. So let's just go right back into that. And all you got to do is in your Google Analytics dashboard, you scroll down to uh, experiments in your content section there. And in experiments, there you go. See a dashboard there. And you just hit create experiments. And they've got a video there. It's super easy. 
and all you when you're done, you just end up taking your code and throwing it into your new page header code injection section oh, of your advanced nice. tab. Yeah, yeah it's just so cool. slick. It's awesome. It's so elegant, which you know everything in Squarespace six seems to be. And I am so jazzed because I'm going to use that to great extent over the next months to come. Uh, thank you for showing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, what are, I'm so excited. It was today. It was like Christmas Day here. So, what? Uh, what about you guys? What are you? Such, such a marketer. What are your favorite uh, <laughs> features? I know. I, I can't help it. Alan, um, I I honestly haven't been using it um, as much just just because I'm kind of targeting. Um, Sites that 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 require 100% customization. So I'm okay. I'm still like k kind of back on V5 with with stacks of projects. Um, I I do have a lot of clients who are like, hey, so do we need to go to V6? And and right now the answer is no. And and I, I was kind of pleased that that uh, that Squarespace actually ac actually I'll say one of the best features I've seen since the launch is the actual Squarespace website. It it, it sounds sounds really weird but i've i was kind of wondering how they were going to handle the you know hey we've got two platforms now here's this yep. one and this one and and to not say hey this one's old don't use it yep. anymore you, you guys want to bail out it, it it was very much like you know like hey you can you can go ahead and create new v5 accounts you can cr keep using that there's you know you're not threatened to do anything new you can keep paying for it and we'll take your money you know it's like but I mean, it, it wasn't even set that way. It was pretty much just like, hey, there's there's two independent platforms, and then it was very clear. I mean, like, do I have to upgrade to? No, you don't have to do. You don't you don't have to do that at all. I mean, if if you're happy with your current your current setup, and let's say you've you've invested money and time in in that current platform, then certainly don't feel obligated that you have to go update. You know, so so I think. From from a uh, designer and just kind of a whole architecture like concept, it was it was pretty amazing to me to see that all roll out and and I I, I haven't found any glitches. I mean anything looks like you know any whether they're help docs or anything like that. I thought I thought they did a really good job with that. So yeah, absolutely. Peter, what about you? What were your um, what were your favorite feature or what's your favorite feature so far? Um, going back to what Alan said, I agree, and that's the way I interpret it from Squarespace. They are going to continue to support both versions, and I, I do. I love V5 as well, um, so I, I, it's nice to hear you say that, Alan. Um, I like the speed. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I feel like I can put up, um, and this is not the same type of website Alan's talking about. This is more... It's sort of like an enhanced about me or about dot me. You know, it's just like you can it put up a, a you know a simple, a very very simple site within a day. Um, mm -hmm. Is it going to be anywhere near the ones that Alan is creating? No, but <laughs> but it's going to um, be great for those you know 50% of small businesses that don't have a website yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you know, and I I would even go one step further to say that yeah, well, Alan's designs are really great. Like to call you know the Squarespace kind of a glorified about me, I think is is it's it's not even. I mean, they're not even in the same ballpark. Part, part, no. right, in the same same sport, you know. No, not at all. <laughs> to, to quote I, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yes, yes. I guess what I, I where I was going with that is a lot of small businesses that I'm dealing with. They, they just want to get started. Mm -hmm. And yeah. with the about.me's, you, you can't really do anything, you know, other than you have that page. Um, I think that this is going to be a great solution for small businesses that want a presence and they want to start, get their hands dirty with all what they're hearing on the news every, every night with the social media and what they're seeing with the social media in the Olympics. I think just getting yeah. on that landing page and then, you know, turning the client over to, you know, some tutorials to Squarespace where they can finally start to start blogging 
and then you know eventually sync up their smartphones, get the Instagram going. It's just a great starting point, but from a designer standpoint, um, for for myself and the clients that I cater to, yeah. it's just it's it's just like you know you're off and running from the very beginning. Yeah, it's really cool. nice. And things like the uh, hey, we've got Nathan Smith joining us here as well. Nathan, are you with us? Hey everyone. <laughs> hey, your video is catching up to us here. We Nathan are. Has we're just had uh, here. Nathan. Oh, I was going to say, he, he, hmm? it looks like Nathan is a Dyson user. That's all I was going to say. Just something very off topic. Two seconds, two seconds. <laughs> all right. Great. Sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely. Nathan. Good. Yeah, we can hear you. So, welcome. Why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself and where, where you're uh, basically, I'm a photographer. I live in Oregon, and uh, just uh, well, my website it just actually just recently changed with uh, with uh, V6. I've been on V5 for a very long time, and just decided that since the shift was coming for six, I I just make a whole brand change in the whole nine yards. So I just recently simplified and went to uh, a nice clean site, which I wanted to do, and and um, took over the URL uh, photonate.com. So. Uh, been listening to you guys for the last five minutes or so, and so I'm I'm not I'm not into all the like crazy crazy uh, amounts of um, coding or whatever. So I'm uh, my my whole view from the whole thing is from the user side of stuff, where I just know enough CSS to make my stuff look <laughs> better, and then uh, you know I put hopefully nicer looking photos than I do for CSS up on on my website and leave it at that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, what's been your favorite? Uh, we're just talking about the topic of what's your favorite uh, Squarespace six feature. Um, mm -hmm. What uh, What have you liked the most so far? Uh, for me, it has been just. It feels like they've. Um, it, it's kind of two parts. It's one is they. It feels like they've decluttered the site. Like they've just really simplified. Uh, you know, like where there was a lot of stuff with V5 where you had to really dig down into different things, like I think trying to merge or delete tags or something, you really had to dig into a page, and it made it a little bit confusing for someone who, again, isn't used to this kind of stuff. And and um, it just seems like it's a the their overall interface is just very clean and has made it very simplistic for people who um, who aren't doing this on an everyday basis to be able to handle doing that. Other than that, I think the blocks. The blocks are awesome. You drop a block in. I mean, it's like Legos, right? You know, Legos for web design. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so for me, that's probably my favorite thing. And, and, I mean, I know they're still adding, just like uh, I saw that you'd posted about the new, I don't even know what it is, the new the, the new header and footer yeah. for different pages yeah. or whatever it is. So, um, but for me, it's just the simplicity of it. They've really cleaned it up, and it just seems like they've made it easier. So, yeah, definitely, layout engine is quite awesome. Um, so, uh, go ahead, Alan. <laughs> oh, the, 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 there was one thing that that I was just hipped to. Um, I I know when when we kind of threw the switch. Actually, those of us who were kind of on as, as beta users of a V6, which there were thousands and thousands of people, I believe. Um, and once they made that switch, you were kind of notified that hey, you have you have 14 days to convert your account or whatever. And if if, if you don't want to do it, it just kind of goes goes away. If you want to do it, then you just pay like a discounted fee or whatever. So developers were kind of like, hey, we want like a sandbox account. And um, so I just learned that uh, through the through the new backend, through the new d d developer um, side of things you can definitely have a sandbox account no charge and i don't think there's a charge at all i, I don't think the thing expires until you make it live and, until you kind of disable d d the, the the developer mode on that and then you have like a 24 hour window to go ahead and make that an active site so it, so it kind of cuts back on people who would kind of abuse the system by just you know saying i'm a developer and they would have a free account um, but those who would be a real developer who want to actually work on the account and, and get that thing working. You know, it's not it's not public to the world yet, so you can you can have that account 
you know, where, where today on, on V5, it's, it's similar. You can just keep re requesting, hey, I need, I need an extension. I need an extension. And, but, um, but now it's like that's, that's a cool sandbox feature that, that's going to actually be very beneficial, which is very cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, well, I think uh, that was some good chatting about the old, uh, you know, the new features of Squarespace 6. Now we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we're going to talk about the actual migration process. So a couple folks have gone through migrating to Squarespace 6, a couple folks haven't. So we will uh, talk a little bit about that um, next. So uh, personally, I've gone through the change. I went through it uh, this weekend. I actually wrote a little bit of a blog post about it as well. Uh, just kind of how I went about doing it. But basically, I found it to be really, really easy. I thought at first that the import tools were going to be really uh, subpar based on some of what I saw in the early, early beta stages, but they really uh, polished most of that up. And the only pages that I find that I'm kind of cleaning up right now are the ones that I would kind of want to, to change anyway because of the new capabilities that I have with Layout Engine and being able to kind of, you know, put those Lego blocks in place, as uh, Nathan was saying. Uh, but uh, the, for the most part, it's pretty easy. And I just had some URLs that I had to kind of keep track of that I needed to kind of remap and using their new URL remapping tool. And um, for the most part, I'm up and running. So it, it was pretty easy. I, I kind of liked, liked the process. And um, I think the other thing that, Nate, you, Nathan, you had said that was it allowed you to kind of start over, start fresh, kind of, go with a clean site, new brand, um, clean up some pages, stuff like that. So uh, it's been great. I've, I've liked it quite a bit. So Nathan, what, what about you? What's your experience been so far? Um, the, only, the only kind of problem that I had was um, after import, a lot of my site, and this was something they had fixed eventually, but it was just something where, uh, what was it? As I was going through, I basically wanted to wipe out all of my tags, categories, and kind of refresh and everything up. And in the, during this process, it was uh, there was some sort of bug where uh, basically the second I even touched the blog post, literally every photo I had in there would disappear. And that's kind of a big thing when you've got you know you've got 20 or 30 photos per per post trying to re-enter them later. So it's not going to work. And they worked through it. They eventually made that work. And other than that, the, it's been pretty flawless. I mean, you know, like you were saying, you have to go in through and, and clean up maybe a, a few minor. Uh, like I, I made the mistake being the newbie. You know, I didn't use the correct linking process. Doing I was doing like the external link type scenario where I would link, you know, with the whole URL instead of the internal linking that I should have done. And so of course, when it imported, I had all these broken links I had to go through and fix. So I learned my lesson. It took me about. It took me probably about uh, 10 straight days to get my blog converted yeah. to five. But but that was because of you know, uh, of the learning process that it involved. So, um, but eh, you, you know, it's it's moving along pretty good now. Yeah, I should have. Uh, I, I created a uh, an Excel spreadsheet. I might have to share it with people. But I it it basically took the old URL, the new URL, and it created like uh, all of the different redirects for you. And so you could just copy and paste them into. Squarespace nice. tools, so you would just you know could redirect them all kind of in one fell swoop. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I did have one issue where somebody or, or some of my pages like I couldn't I built them and then I couldn't see them anymore, or I I couldn't click on a few pages. But uh, that was short lived, and the support team kind of jiggled it loose, so so to speak. Um, but uh, I don't know, Peter, have you uh, tell us about your your experiences so far? Huh. Well, early on in the when I received my beta, I tried to export or import my local pigeon website, mm -hmm. and I, I I do so much with Storify, and none of them showed up at the time. And I don't know if that's changed since then, but I I, I I'm gonna what you were talking about earlier. I'm gonna just start from scratch, rebuild local pigeon, re re invent the idea of it, I guess, and then I, th I think these other two websites that I'm doing in V6 first are giving me ideas about how I'm going to migrate local pigeon over, um, but I, yeah, I think about it every day because it's, it's a huge project, and if they're not going to appear, then I might have to just sort of start over. Um, there's just like 365 then times 3, bringing all those over, none of them are appearing right now, or they didn't when I started, so... 
I, I agree right. with you. I'm looking at this as an opportunity to just clean the slates, re, rethink everything from the beginning, and then hopefully emerge with a better brand. Hmm. Um, it's interesting. I think uh, definitely firing up a new six account if your first one was if you just had that experience in the beta, I would try another import with. Yeah, that was months ago. Okay, yeah, try a new import with a fresh, fresh account because I, I totally experienced a much better import process the second time about uh, okay, when I did it this last weekend. Okay. Yeah, I mean the first one I just kind of imported and just kind of. Um, I didn't even use that beta account. Uh, I, I I started a new one uh, for for Big Picture Web when I moved it over just last weekend. So it's it's nice and fresh and everything. But um, but but totally try that and good I will. <laughs> good luck because that <laughs> that would be really heartbreaking to try and lose you know or to lose like three years worth of material. You know? <laughs> yeah. So Alan, when are you moving over? What's your What's your plan with the developer kit and migration and stuff like that? Um, well, I just redid my own site over on squareflare.com, uh, you know, just to kind of update my current V5 status, um, just more to, to get my marketing in order and things. And, and I also produced a video, which is... Which is uh, if you guys haven't seen... A lot of work. If you seen, haven't seen Alan's video... Take a few minutes now, or you know, pause this show and go and look at another uh, at Alan's video at squareflare.com on his website. It's beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. continue, Alan. Squareflare.com/slash/hello. We'll we'll just wait. Go ahead. No, no. no. They can oh, not pause now. It. Continue. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's the future. Oh, so where was I going? Oh, yeah. So 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 I I, I basically pretty much just. Did, did an entire overhaul of my own site, um, and you know because of that, it, it, it's one of these things where um, I I have so many V5 things that I'm working on currently that I just haven't had time to to, to jump over and play. Um, so you know at this point I'll probably slowly migrate my own site over as I'm as I'm working on the back end of other things, and then and we'll we'll see. I'm not sure how long it'll be, but looking forward to it. Yeah, I would imagine with you that your timeline's a little bit longer because you really like to dig into all that custom CSS and until they have a, a more uh, robust and, and I don't know, uh, officially launched developer platform, it's risky for you to kind of get tied in with a new, or with yeah. that part of the platform because they, ch they change that a lot and you might end up with like a deprecated code branch in your website. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, you know, you know, t today I go over and I, I just want to do just that one thing. Like, I got to change this color, just really, you know, anal or something. I got to do it, and and because I can, I get more frustrated. But you know, I'd rather just crack it open and just do it the way I would know how to do it normally. So, so you know, but we'll we'll see. It won't. It, won't, it, I mean, it certainly won't be long. Um, but you know, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to, uh, um, you know, working on some cool templates that maybe we could even sell out and do things like that with them too. So, I'll buy your template. Okay. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, we should do little widgets or something like that. I think widgets is going to be where it's at or 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 integrations or or things like that. I think that's going to be really neat. Um so speaking of, yeah. you know, kind of what what's new and what's exciting in in the future of, of Squarespace, uh now might be the time to segue into our final topic for the evening, the Squarespace 6 Future Outlook. So a lot of new features that that, uh, that are going to be capable with, uh, or, or that are going to be available on, on Squarespace 6, developed both by Squarespace itself in the months to come, as well as by kind of an army of developer designers with this new access to uh, the, the development layer of Squarespace itself. So. Uh, what uh, what features do you think they're going to roll out with next, guys? What do you think? Hmm, good question. Actually, we I think we talked about this before on on our podcast, but um, I was given a demo early on, and, and and the example was kind of comparing, um, like you know, if you're going to work on a V5, let's say your client is a real estate agent, and today, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's right. I don't see myself when I talk, but you see me. I was like, <laughs> it was weird. I was like, 
Hey, I see someone else. Can we edit that? <laughs> Okay, yeah, so anyway, I'm sure um, that... Uh, nope. What? what this isn't the Olympics. Just keep going. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Oh, so anyway, yeah, right. um, so, so, so let's say you're a real estate agent and, and, and you want to use a V5 journal or any WordPress blog, what, what have you. So, so you'd probably put like the property listing on the, jur- on, on the blog. Maybe like the, the title of the blog entry would be the street address or something like that. And then within the body, there's not a whole lot that you can do unless you know CSS. You know, hey, I want to put the image over here. Okay, well, yeah, you can do that. You can move that image and align it. I want to have a different title. I don't want to put, here's my listing agents, and here's all this other stuff. Um, and maybe you want to do a little gallery in there and stuff like that. Well, on v on V6, that kind of stuff is a lot more possible because, you know, you can drag and drop components and and maybe you can even drag a little gallery over, um, but it's going to go even further where you could actually crack open the back end and create things specifically for that client. Instead of saying create a new post, you could say add a new home, and then and then within that you could actually allow the fields and say what's your list price, you know, what what how many square feet, how many this 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 this, and then all that you could customize it to to appear in a little table, and then you know kind of build that site specifically for that use instead of saying, go to the journal and hit new blog entry. And then the excerpt, you know, that, that stuff is just so confusing, you know, to, to, to explain to someone. So I think, you know, in the future, it's going to be a situation where, where, you know, I was a little scared in the beginning to kind of say, wow, you know, this, this, this thing is going to take over and it's going to, you know, I won't have any work because it's going to be so awesome for other people. But I think there's going to be so many customization opportunities to do something specifically for that vertical client who wants to use that one thing and make it really easy for them to use. You know, um, that, yeah. that that kind of excites me about about the future of Squarespace, really. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you explained it well. The the ability to have those content types and really be able to control what types of metadata are associated with those content types, that's going to be powerful. Yeah. And you could use that uh, for the example that you list, or, uh, gave, uh, but then you know you hook an e-commerce engine to that, and all of a sudden what you just described is a product catalog, and you've got maybe one of the best you know, e-commerce engines on the web too. So I think, I think you've got a really, really solid point there that the extensibility and... The, the underlying framework that, that they're making or that they've made is is really remarkable for, for the future. And, you know, and if Squarespace is, isn't going to develop that, like, yet, I will. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I mean, I mean, you could sell six real estate templates and, like, show people how to use them and, you know, sell that. For, it's like that, that opportunity is just very, very cool, so... Yeah, and I mean, what uh, and think about I mean Nathan for examples for photo galleries already. There's some great templates out there, but being able to maybe hook in a custom preview system so that if you're you know doing you know some photography for a client or something like that, and they want to view their proofs and and you want to have that experience occur within Squarespace, then maybe that's an option too or something like that. Yeah, at this point, it's it's just. It's pretty galleries, you know, make everything kind of line up and look nice. But, uh, I mean, like uh, what Alan was saying, I, w- I didn't even know any of the stuff was in the works. And, I mean, that, that is pretty exciting. I mean, the, the fact that there can be things, because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, photography-specific uh, or companies that are making photography-specific blogs or, or templates and things like that. And Squarespace, I know that they're, they're definitely got to focus on, on some photography aspects. Uh, but to be able to, you know, for for me, it's it really comes down to the picture, and if I've got clients that are are wanting specific types of pictures, and and you know, you throw out twenty of them, uh, if there's like a system in there that gives them maybe the ability to rate them uh, in, a, in a specific order, so that I can put an order together for them, or or they can have you know ways of sharing them amongst people in their own family or, or whatever, you know, some of the stuff like Alan was saying where he can be, you know, you can build this kind of uh, custom back end for, for something very specific. It's very uh, tied in with what you're doing. That, that is pretty exciting. I've never even 
again, didn't even know that was coming out or any any part it's, of that. It's was, probably not, but you know. Oh, see, now you got me excited was. about no, that. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's totally coming. I mean, every time uh, they, they they keep talking about all these things they're going to do with it. I mean, the, the the system that they built is basically uh, it took two and a half years or so because what we see is only the tip of the iceberg, and so right. much of its power comes from the framework underneath it. So uh, I, they, they've talked about, or at some point, Anthony had mentioned to me um, uh, probably like a year ago now that e-commerce is certainly in the in the plan or supporting that. And you'll probably see it not in the form that, you know, you can uh, eat. It probably won't be like a Squarespace branded uh, e-commerce engine, but what it'll be is much like like their new Mailchimp integration or Google Docs integration, where mm -hmm. you'll have a really big name in the CMS field or the, the the shopping cart field, so like an Equate or Shopify or something like that, and they'll just do a, a business development deal, and you'll just build your catalog over in one That's tool and awesome. have it all. I mean that would be such a reality if that if that uh, came to pass, and I think now with the money that they've received, with the success they have, the hype for the platform, it's totally within reach, and definitely probably on well, definitely probably, but I would hope that it's on the on the roadmap as a biased enthusiast that I am. <laughs> I don't know, Peter. What? Uh, how could how could some of those uh, those features take off for you? Um, I agree. I think Squarespace, Shopify seems to have a leg up on Squarespace in that regards with the e-commerce uh, part of it, and I, I, it's inevitable. I think that they're going to incorporate that, and I've heard a little bit of sentiment from some of the staff indicating they may be going in that direction fairly soon. Um, I, regarding the future of the platform, I guess my biggest question is how. How long will it be before individual humans, professionals, um, students, how long before everybody really wants to take control of their their own brand and have their own website? And same for families. I mean, how long is it going to be before every family has their own website? It's sort of like everybody goes to work, they drive home in their their house, that's their physical address. And I'm seeing a trend where, especially on the local pigeon calendar, that's where it, it, I picked it up. It's just so much easier. I, I see that when people organize all their their uh, family, friends, and career all in one spot. And I, I just find that a lot more useful than people just sort of trusting their friends, you know, on LinkedIn, etc., to to create this brand for them. I think it's going to be a lot easier, and it's a different skill set for people to learn how to control their own destiny and design their own lifestyle. And I think V6 allows that. Moving in that direction. I don't know. It's a little off subject, but what are your thoughts, Josh? Oh man, I think I think you definitely hit it right on the head. I think now in today's age, with in this economy and with this culture, you uh, the perception of who you are online is really the reality of what people see when yeah. they see you on the street. And so if people come to you know joshbroughton.com, they're going to get redirected to bigpictureweb.com because that's my basically where my brand is. And if you read about me or if you know about me, then you you kind of get to know me a little bit and and that that I mean, it's helped me get a job. It's helped me meet people, and and I think for today's you know kids, the 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 folks that are coming out of school, they they have an intuitive knowledge of how to operate all of these tools, and once they understand that it can be leveraged for you know a lot of their personal and maybe professional success as well, then you're gonna it's gonna be like a wildfire that 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 will spread, and I think it's starting to already. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. So uh, hopefully Squarespace Six can be at the at the center of all that. So I don't know. What do you guys have any other any other final thoughts about the, the you know the future of Squarespace and Squarespace Six before we kind of start uh, doing our sign off here? Well, for me, it's just been. Uh, I'm I'm I'll just straight up say I'm I'm a Mac fanboy I'm an Apple fanboy for, so for me Squarespace has been very much a kind of a uh, the the Apple version of website design or website company for me um, 
So this isn't a, an Apple's Windows type thing. It's just for me, I, I just want to be able to, I always wanted to be able to just basically get my content out, make it look nice, and then get on with taking the pictures and doing the things I need to do. Since my job isn't the design part of it, it's just making stuff look nice. And so for me, uh, V5 was, was a great thing. I loved it. And V6 is just, I made a comment today that uh, just the, the fact that it makes blogging simpler for me I'm going to be blogging. And I, I enjoy blogging almost as much as I'm, uh, I'm enjoying taking the pictures and posting them and sharing with people. And the fact that they've made it even simpler, I can drag and drop my photos. I just, I just love that. I think for anybody who's, who's not into it, uh, like from the design aspect, who's just really the end user, it's going to, especially with all these abilities, of, you know, possibly these new things being added, I know they're adding stuff all the time. It's just, I don't know, I'm looking forward to it. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot out of it, so... Yeah, you know, uh, we couldn't tell that you loved Apple with your with your headphones there. <laughs> and uh, but uh, uh, I think we all have a pair, right? <laughs> yeah, right. The uh, I like what you. I bet they both hate and love that that metaphor comparing them to Apple. But it really is like a really nice controlled and and curated experience. I don't know. Right. It's, it's a good way to put it, but I don't know. Alan, Peter, any final thoughts? I'll let Alan close. <laughs> um, I, 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 it's just going to be really interesting to me to, to see how people take and share stories not only on the desktop but also on the, the tablet and the phone. I, I don't I, – I appreciate Facebook. I respect Facebook, but I don't like how people are stereotyped on Facebook. And I think uh, – content management systems like V6 will be able to allow the general public to be able to control their own destiny a little bit better. Yeah, well said, man. Very insightful. Alan, any profound final insights? Dude. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right on. I, I've, I've pretty much spilled everything I know during the show, so if you're paying attention, you got me. Sorry, it's awesome, Alan. You you always give your I always give your your all, and uh, and you've left it all on the table for us. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for hanging out and talking Squarespace with us tonight. I'm your host, Josh Broughton. If you like, you can connect with me on Twitter at JL Broughton, and I even got a Facebook link there. Yay! Uh, but also, you can find me at the new and improved bigpictureweb.com with the uh, on Squarespace 6. So, um, Alan, uh, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Uh, you can find me at squareflare.com. Uh, head to squareflare.com slash hello for my, for my video that we talked about. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Alan Hauser. And I don't really do the, the Google thing. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Wait no. until everybody else does. And uh, Nathan, uh, thank you for joining us. Why don't you tell everybody uh, where they can find you? Oh. I think we may have lost your Nothing. microphone. You got me now? Oh, well, yeah, we got you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mute, I mute in between when so I'm not interrupting. Uh, photonate.com is the new website, uh, and I'm on Twitter, uh, Nate Smith, which is N and then the letter, or the number 8, Smith, and that's my Twitter user. Right? Great. Thanks for joining us. And Peter, thank you so much for joining us as well. Tell folks where they can find you. Uh, thanks, Josh. I, if you want to say hi, I can be uh, reached at peterslatnicher.com, and my Twitter, my personal is at peterslatnicher. So thank you. Great. Well, that'll do it once again. If you are interested in joining us next time, reach out to me on any one of these fabulous social networks or at the website, bigpictureweb.com. Thanks for joining. Thank you.